The dawn of the 1960s was ripe for revolution. The civil rights movement sparked debate about cultural divide, and in towns across America, integration took hold. For Indiana Avenue, the epicenter of Indianapolis's jazz scene, the end of forced segregation led to downtown expansion, and the once dynamic corridor disappeared. Yet 60 miles south, something was stirring at Indiana University's School of Music. In the 1950s, students and musicians such as David Baker, Al Cobine, and Jerry Coker were playing jazz around town and around campus. The music threatened to infiltrate the hollowed classical-only halls of the school. Such was the sentiment that anecdotes describe students being thrown out of practice rooms for daring to play jazz. The changing social and political climate of the 1960s, however, provided an unexpected opening to bring jazz from the hidden campus corners to the IU music halls. It was the summer of 1963 when 250,000 civil rights supporters gathered at the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, listening to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. dream of a better world. Within the decade, he would be dead. But his legacy would send a ripple that would stretch from D.C. to Bloomington. As David Baker explains, all of a sudden there was this interest in diversity at the degree level. School was just beginning to be integrated, and so consequently people became very interested in having some awareness of who black people were. The jazz history courses were beginning to gain some credibility. Increased interest meant newfound support, and by 1968, Indiana University formed one of the first jazz degree programs in the country. All that the university needed was a leader, and for that, they turned to a man rooted in Indiana jazz, David Baker. Born in Indianapolis in 1931, Baker grew up along Indiana Avenue at a time when the community still buzzed to the beats of jazz music. At Crispus Attucks High School, Baker discovered his love for Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker, as well as his natural talent for trombone. Yet it was outside the classroom walls where Baker honed his craft. As he explains, education took place in the street. We'd go around to the clubs listening and trying to get in. Because we weren't old enough, we'd put on our berets and our horned rimmed glasses, draw mustaches on our upper lips, and hope it didn't rain. After years playing trombone with his group, the Dave Baker Quartet, Baker left the avenue for the academic world of Indiana University, where he graduated with a master's degree in music in 1954. Over the next decade, he toured with such legends as George Russell and Quincy Jones. A devastating car accident, however, dramatically altered Baker's career. After lingering injuries forced him to abandon his trombone, he sought a new musical outlet. The choice was unlikely, especially for a jazz musician, the cello. Yet his new instrument inspired new musical paths, shifting his focus from performance to composition and education. By 1966, Baker returned to Indiana University to complete his doctoral studies. The timing was synchronistic. Jerry Coker, who played an instrumental role in the birth of jazz education at Indiana University, sought a successor to lead the newly formed jazz program. Baker's unique combination of street credibility and formal education made him the perfect candidate. For the next 10 years, Baker acted as sole educator, establishing fundamental components that would lead to the program's overwhelming success. First, he devised a diverse course offering that extended beyond customary music ensembles. Students could choose classes in such subjects as jazz history, jazz analysis, and the evolution of music. In addition, through his compositions, Baker helped bridge the gap between jazz and classical traditions, writing pieces that merged both genres in a form called third stream, strengthening his relationship with classical music faculty members. Finally, in a field where musical evolution occurs at lightning speed, he created a program that is able to adapt quickly. As Baker explains, we've had to keep our ears to the ground because it's been dictated by what the students need, but also by looking backwards and telling them, this is your legacy, but you can't stop here. The program's legacy hasn't stopped either. Today, the IU Jazz Studies program remains one of the most renowned in the world producing a number of notable jazz musicians, as well as helping to create an enduring audience for the music. And it is a jazz legacy that is still being written. From the echoes of Indiana Avenue to the bustle of the Bloomington campus today, 
on the same worn paths, on the same spooning walls where legend says Hoagy Carmichael first penned Stardust, a new young jazz musician might stop, listen, and perhaps, like Carmichael, be inspired by the Indiana town around him.